If you're like me, you love to eat, you love to go out to restaurants, but you hate to cook, or at least you don't know what to cook, I just made an app that takes a picture of your refrigerator, as you can see my fridge is right here, and you could just scan a picture of your refrigerator, and then my AI that I just built inside of anti-gravity is gonna take all the ingredients inside your fridge, as you can see right here, and then it's going to make custom recipes based on the ingredients. I do it all in this video from start to finish, and this is actually a React Native and Expo application that we're gonna be able to actually launch into the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. All of it in this video, step-by-step, step, how to use anti-gravity, how to connect the AI. So if you're ready to build a fun, vibe-coded AI cooking app, all right, we're gonna be using anti-gravity. If you guys aren't familiar, anti-gravity is a dedicated IDE by Google that sits inside of your computer. So this is an actual app that's on the computer. This is not a web-based tool like AI um, Google Studio. So here's the idea for the app. So Smart Fridge and Culinary Assistant. Create a sleek cooking assistant React Native app. So I'm gonna be doing this as a mobile application that's gonna get actually submitted to the App Store. You get the point. But first what I wanna do is I wanna take this into Google and I'm gonna say this. So this is kind of like a pre-prompt to put inside of anti-gravity. I want to build a React Native Plus Expo application that I want to actually deploy on iOS and Android. I'm gonna be building in anti-gravity, so I need you to make sure you set up everything correctly to be able to do this. Can you give me a simple bullet point MVP that I could start with inside of anti-gravity to build this project properly? I want to focus on the UI and IX and all the functionalities with placeholder data, and then we're gonna add all of the back end. So the reason I wanna do this is I wanna actually build out the front end of it. I want it to work, I want it to have all the screens, I wanna make sure everything's perfect, and then we're gonna connect it and do all the live data. All right, perfect, so now we're in anti-gravity. So the way you set it up, it, this basically works exactly like cursor, VS Code, or any of the rest. So I'm going to open a folder, so let's make a new folder on my desktop, and we're gonna call this our um, Hey Cooking, or Hey Cooking app. <laughs> no, actually, yeah, let's just go with that. <laughs> yeah, so I'm actually doing this for real, all right? Um, then we're going to say, yes, we want to give it access. So this is not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial on anti-gravity. There's plenty of those out there, but I'm just going to start actually cooking this up so you guys could just follow along and get this built. So first thing we're going to go up here on the right side, and you have a couple different modes. So this is very important when you're actually starting with these tools, is you have planning mode, and then you also have fast mode, and then you also have your different language. So right now we're going to be using Gemini 3 Flash because what I'm gonna do is I just wanna plan it out first. Okay, so then I'm just gonna paste that prompt in there. Okay, so now I've approved the plan, so here it is, check this out. Define the MVP and get approved, which we just did. Now right now it's initializing the Expo project. So if your end goal is to do cross-platform building Android and app together, it's not a native language like you would use Swift, for example, for iOS, but React Native. And through React Native, you're able to set up Expo, and then it's gonna be able to actually use EAS to submit for you into the App Store. We'll get into that all later, but right now I just wanna kinda of set up the main things. So whenever you wanna build a cross-platform application, React Native plus Expo. And if you guys haven't set up Expo, it is free to use, get it set up, and this is going to be the way that we're gonna push the project to Expo. We're gonna use all the Expo components, libraries, other environments, everything in here, and this will build pretty much a full stack framework for us to actually submit to the App Store. So this is what the dashboard actually looks like. Right now, you just gotta set up the account. As you can see, I have a bunch of projects in here that I've actually built. And of course, if you guys like this kind of video, it's a little selfish plug, I run a community called AI Builders. There's 478 members all in here, all vibe coding from all over the world. I think we have 52 different countries right now, and people are launching products, building, founders. Right here, Drew just crossed 5,000 MRR on his newest micro SaaS. We got a lot of people. It's a fun community. We do live weekly calls. So if you guys are interested, all the links are below. And uh, let's get back to it. So as you see right now, it's going through the checklist step by step. I haven't done anything yet. So it's literally been one prompt. So built the navigation, built the dashboard, already created the recipes, recipe details, and the shopping list already getting built right now with one prompt. All right, so it just finished. So it says I've completed the MVP foundation for your fridge and culinary assistant. The app is built on Expo and React Native, featuring premium WoW aesthetics, including the dashboard. The right thing inside now, before you need to do all these commands, all you have to do is, for example, right now at this stage is say launch simulator right here. So that's the command. Normally you would go in, you would go into terminal and have to do all this stuff, but I'm teaching you the absolute basics so you don't have to worry about anything. And the way this simulator actually comes up is you guys need to have Xcode connected, which is the actual Apple native software. And again, you can download it for free, but if you want to launch the App Store, it's gonna cost you 99 bucks a year. This is just the price to pay with 
um, Apple. But once you set up Xcode, you download your simulators, and then you're going to have an actual simulator that's going to pop up as you see here. And if you want to do it yourself and not go that, the actual command is npm, npm run iOS, if that's what you want to test. If you want to test Android, then it's npm run Android. Now our simulator is going to open up. So you can do it either way. That's the actual command. But if you guys don't know the commands, just tell the actual agent, hey, open up the iOS simulator. So here you go. So now the simulator is loaded. And the great thing is when you're using Expo, you download it on your phone and you're going to have a QR code. So right now I'm also going to do both. And the great thing is you need to remember is you need to be able to actually test it on your phone because a lot of times the simulator can do a lot, but there's still limitations. So if something's not working, definitely use a real iOS device. So let me scan this QR code and I'm going to be able to show you how you want to be able to do it through your actual phone and not just on the, on the device. So here we go. So we got current ingredients. So this would be snap your fridge picture, which we like. So we're going to hit plus that'll work. Then we have our current ingredients. And then we have our recipes. So there you go, avocado salmon toast, protein packed salad, classic omelet, slow cooked beef. And then it gives us an actual shopping list for our application. Pretty straightforward, simple and clean. And then here's all the ingredients that it's going to actually do. So what I wanna do is I wanna make this AI enabled. So I wanna connect the actual Google API so we can actually do a lot of analysis on this. So that's going to be the next thing we want to do. Next, I want to add the Gemini image recognition with the Google API so I can actually take a picture of my food and I want you to analyze it and take out all of the ingredients that are in the photo. All right, pretty straightforward. Let's give it a rip. Let's see what it does. So now I've switched over to Gemini 3 Pro. So now we're into the actual coding of more of the difficult features. So this is just a great way to do it because the first one was pretty simple. Like building a simple UI with placeholder data, some of those smaller models can do it. So Flash is great at that. But once we get into the more difficult coding, I like to definitely use a better model like Gemini 3 Pro High. So then it's just giving me the best model for coding when it comes to actual difficult tasks. And also before it finishes this, the next great thing you wanna do is you wanna definitely set up your Git. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna do source control. And we're going to actually commit our first Git. So we have a GitHub repository for this project to make sure that we're saving every single versioning in case something does screw up. One very important thing is you guys have to make sure you have your GitHub installed. So if you're getting an error message, make sure you go over to extensions, type in GitHub, and right up here you'll see that you just need to install this. So I already have it installed, but just so you guys know if you're running into any kind of issues with GitHub. And also there's a million other apps in here that you can install based on whatever project you're building. So now we're gonna snap our fridge, we're gonna grant permission. And again, I like to try it first on the phone, which we know it's not gonna work because it's gonna to have to use a camera, but at least that works. So now let's go to our phone. So what I have here, here's our simulator. And then on the one on the left is actually my screen. So you guys could see it really nicely. So look, I'm scrolling and then it's actually reacting. I'm just filming it a quick time so you could see. So snap your fridge, grant permission, allow. And then here's our screen, but I'm gonna select the image from the fridge and then hit choose. Now it's identifying. So it says fail to analyze image, please try again. So what we wanna do is we wanna go into our terminal and see what that error was and see what happened and see what the error is. And obviously we haven't added our Google API key. So that's what it is. So it built the function. So now it says right here that the API is not connected. So we need to connect the API next. So the way we do that, it's really easy. Just go to Google AI Studio and then down here it says get API key. And then you just have to either create a new key. So let's just create a new one. And then we're going to call this Hey Cooking. And this is a pay as you go model. So once you set this up, then, all right, so there it is up here. And we're just going to copy this API key. Then we're going to go back to anti gravity. And then we're going to give it the API key. And then I'm going to give it one command. So I'm going to say, here is my API key for Google that we're going to be using for all the image recognition and all of the AI enabled features, period. Make sure you hide this API key so no one can access it in my project. Very important thing to make sure you ask. All right, so now it's gonna cook it up. It's gonna create an environment variable inside of our project that's going to actually hide our API keys. It's gonna do this by default, but I just wanna say it so you guys can understand and start learning that whenever you're building stuff for production, you're gonna definitely have to hide your API keys, add security, all of your RSL policies to make sure that nobody can hijack your application. All right, perfect. And as you can see, I've updated your project to securely handle the API key. So I created that .env file and then I put everything inside of it, the Expo public Google API key. So inside of Expo, that's where it's actually going to be living. So then when we go to production, it's going to be actually hidden in there. All right, so next let's go to NPM run iOS. Let's relaunch our simulator after all the changes. And let's take a look if we have our 
app not working. So let me load up my phone here. Let me scan this QR code really quick. I like to do a fresh install personally, just so I make sure that it works every single time. And here's our default. Then we're gonna go scan, select, select our fridge, pick all our goodies. Let's keep those oranges in there. Actually, no, I wanna get the salad on top. I'll fix that later. And now it should work and identify all of our ingredients. Let's see if it did. There it is. Grapes, green juice, jar of condiments, strawberries, zucchini noodles, bread, olive oil, feta crumbs, kimchi, sauce, milk, eggs, Kobe beef patties. Wait, let me just show you that it's actually a real deal. So here you go. Let's take a look what we got to make sure we're looking at the right stuff. So there you go. It's got the kimchi. It's got eggs, the apple juice. I got the avocado, got the grapes up here. Look, there's only a few grapes and it picked all of that up. So pretty amazing. Strawberries, everything is up in here. We got the milk, we got the butter, we got the Kobe beef. It actually picked up that it's Kobe beef. Feta cheese, perfect. All right, so now we basically have our AI enabled image analyzer working. So next what I wanna do is be able to actually do something with this, right? So right now it doesn't actually go in and create our suggestions because we haven't done that feature yet. So that's what we wanna do next. So right now we'd actually just have all of our ingredients. Let me see if I can delete the ingredients. Yep, I could delete them, that's perfect. And then we need a way on the bottom after I've snapped the photo to be like create the recipes for me. So let's do that now. All right, here we go. The image recognition works perfectly and all of my ingredients are shown. Now what I wanna do is I want to add a button that says, make me my recipes. Once that button is pushed, I want you to suggest five recipes based on the ingredients that are inside my fridge. All right, we're gonna let that rip. So one of the great things when you actually have your phone connected to your computer is down here, you get to actually see everything. So you get to see what's actually happening. So you can see right here that the log shows everything that was actually put out into the app. So you know what's actually happening. So this is great for debugging. This is great for seeing logs to make sure that everything is actually working correctly. So this is a pretty big part because now it's actually gonna build out our recipes. Yeah, you can see right here, it just popped up. So here's our recipes.tx, TSX. So this is where it's going to actually create the recipes. Right now we were using placeholder data to make sure that it was good, but now it's gonna actually take our data. That's why I like to do it first, making sure that the visuals are there. And we could have spent four hours, you could have gone in and designed them all in Figma. But again, here at Speed, I just wanna show you the process. If you have inspiration, I would put them in there, drag them into your builder and say, hey, I want this website or this app to look exactly like this, you know, those types of things. But for here, it's speed and showing you exactly how to build it, not to make it look pretty, even though it still looks pretty good. So even if you have no skills of design, this actually looks pretty good. Oh, I could already see our button, make me my recipes, even though it's not done coding, so that'll be perfect. So actually, the more I think about it, when, I, when this is built with my grocery list, I'm gonna actually connect it to an API for a food delivery service. So I can actually get all these groceries if I want for things that are missing, for example. And I'm also going to add a social component to this so people can share recipes with their friends and family. And then there's also gonna be a feed of all kinds of stuff. So it's a simple idea that we can obviously develop and evolve, but I just always wanted to build this for myself and now I'm just gonna be able to do it. All right, so let's take a look if everything works. Let's go in and grab our fridge, scan our fridge. Here we go. We got our proper model selected. We have all of our functions now. So this should give us the ability. So there's our ingredients, 16 items. And now when we click, make me my recipes, there it is. Chefing up some ideas. I'm definitely gonna be cooking up some ideas. I do like chefing up though. There it is, Kobe beef and kimchi wraps. Zucchini noodle salad with feta and grapes. Pickled onion and egg toast with mixed greens. What, I would've never thought of that. Kobe beef bowl with zucchini noodles and kimchi. That sounds amazing. You can also delete them now. So before I didn't have the delete function. And now let's take a look at Kobe beef. And now we have Kobe beef, 25 minutes, 600 medium. Here's all the ingredients. Here's all the noodle. We can also add missing ingredients. Uh, pretty impressed actually that I was able to do this in about 25 minutes, but let's keep going. So now what I'm gonna do, but before we do that, we gotta have a little fun. So check this out. So I have another image of my fridge, but it's the side with all of the sauces, including the champagne. <laughs> Let's see what it cooks up for. Pickles, sauces, champagne, ketchup, Italian. <laughs> this is gonna be absolutely hilarious to see what kind of recipes can be made with champagne. Pickle juice champagne cocktail, ketchup and Italian glazed chicken. 
Oh, this is too good. I love it. Pickle juice champagne cocktail. Hope you guys are enjoying this video. It's been fun to vibe code this and uh, just show you the power of what Google has to offer anti-gravity and also how you can do this and actually make phone applications that you can then submit to the iOS app store. And, uh, and also, like I mentioned before, if you guys are interested, definitely come check out the school, come build with us. We have so many people creating some incredible applications, absolute beginners that have never touched Vibe Coding before, all the way to full stack developers. Somebody in our community just crossed $300,000 in revenue, and many people have reached the $10,000 mark and the $1,000 mark. So it's, uh, it's been really fun and rewarding to have a community. I built it for myself, but now we have so many people and they're actually creating incredible products. And just like that, we have our whole app. Now we're going to go in. We have all of our ingredients, every single thing that we wanted to build. And our app is complete so far. There's obviously a lot more work to do, but the whole purpose of this was to show you guys the power of anti-gravity, power of Google, power of building using these tools, just taking a simple idea without a massive plan and just vibe coding it all the way through. So definitely come build with us inside AI Builders. All the links are below and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in part two when I finish this app, I push it to Expo, I finish all the features and then we're gonna launch it to the iOS App Store. All right, hope you guys are doing well and I'll talk to you later.